We all heard about the release of the new Arduino Portenta board. It's been more than a year since the integration of this board on the market, a real beast for industrial applications. No worries guys, this is not just an unboxing video because we will play a bit with this board today. Hey guys, it's Chris. It's been a long time since I posted a video in my YouTube channel and you can even notice the changes. The old name of my YouTube channel was Megadas and now it has become DIY Guy Chris, but it is all the same. Same person, same video style, same everything, but better topics. The giveaway program, it's still here. If you want to participate, just write a comment right down in this video, write whatever you want, even your name, then subscribe to my YouTube channel and activate the notification button to be informed when I announce the list of winners. The winners are three randomly selected persons who will have the chance to win a 30 US dollars free coupons that they can use to order PCBs from JLC PCB. Back into our Portenta board, it has a dual-core ARM H7 processor from ST Microelectronics, surrounded by many other integrated circuits to expand the board features. Let's keep focusing on the MCU itself. Many many features. It has a very high BPS for both cores, up to 35 communication peripherals, Definitely not a board to just blink an LED. All of these details are just for the dual core processor, but still other more external peripherals around it, like the Wi Fi and Bluetooth, and more other peripherals that you can find their full description through the board datasheet available on the Arduino Pro website. There you can find the full board schematic. And I really like it, the board 3D view feature over there provided by Adjom 365. All board's components are clickable so you can get the parts references and details without moving elsewhere. But how to use this cute beast? That's today's video's topic. It says that the board has the same Arduino NKR heater connectors. It means that if we soldered some steel connectors over here, we can access the processor's ports. Unfortunately, I'm not that kind of a person who will screw up the awesome looking of a 85 boxes board with these ugly connectors. So I decided to use the board through its high density connectors. Yes, those tiny connectors at the bottom of the board. How to access them? That's the question. Actually, these mezzanine connectors have 80 pins each and provide the access to all board's peripherals. So I decided to create my own circuit design to interact with the Portenta. I moved to Altium Designer to start drawing schematic for my PCB. After reading the datasheet, I defined the appropriate mezzanine connectors for my customized board. With the help of Octopart, I downloaded the part scheme and footprint so I can use it now easily in Altium Designer. Then I added some LEDs to perform some programming tests on the digital and PWM pins, some slide switches for digital inputs. It's good to have also motor driver for some power control. And I added this Max 6675 to test the ability of executing some libraries on my code. I transformed this schematic into a PCB design and this is a big plus for Altium that you can get all the needed sections combined here in one design tool, which makes the PCB designing super handy. Now routing the circuit board is definitely a game play. I respected the header to header spacing to match the Portenta layout the accurate measures of Altium help it a lot on this part. You can even get the Altium design files of the Arduino Portenta to be sure that you are moving through the right path, because Arduino Portenta board has been designed through Altium Designer. Now the last thing is giving a cool name to my customized board. Throne board for my cute Portenta. I got the Gerber files ready to be submitted to JLC PCB for manufacturing. As always, the PCB ordering step is the easiest one ever. Just upload the Gerber files and set some PCB parameters like color, thickness, etc. I also ordered the design-related stencil to make the PCB assembly easy for me, 
especially with these tiny footprints that I selected. I pay for my order, and yo, just 6 days later, I got my boards on my desktop. Very well manufactured as usual. And here is the stencil as well. Now we have all the ingredients ready, it's time to assemble. I used this low temperature solder paste to assemble my electronics parts using the hot plate. I don't recommend the use of a solder iron or a soldering hot air gun because the plastic housing of these HRS connectors could be easily damaged. After finishing the assembly, do not forget to clean the board with some flux removal. Then make some short circuit tests to ensure that we didn't left any shorted path. I also plugged external power supply to measure that Portenta will receive the power through the external power source without problems. My throne board is ready now to receive the gas. As you can see guys, the Portenta fits very well on the throne and it has a charming looking. Now we move straight to the software part. I run my Arduino IDE, no configuration needed for the latest version so I directly uploaded this Blink LED sketch to my board. This is very positive as a result, and I got the desired blinking frequency on one of my LEDs, which confirms that the access to the Arduino Portenta board's ports has been successfully achieved. This was the first part of the throne board tutorials, more other tests will be posted on the second part of this cool project, so stay tuned. You can even follow my Instagram to watch the short videos that I'm posting there about this throne board. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time.